rescue efforts are underway in North Carolina after Hurricane Dorian slammed the state's outer banks Friday. Hundreds of people were stranded on Ocracoke Island as Dorian made landfall with winds of up to 90 miles an hour. The storm now appears to be heading out to sea, but could travel along the coast of New England this weekend. We will get the latest on the storm's path shortly, but Omar Villafranca begins our coverage from North Carolina with more on the ongoing rescue efforts. Late this afternoon, once the wind subsided, the first chopper took off for Ocracoke Island to rescue the nearly 800 people trapped there. We are going up into the attic. I pray that everybody is, is safe. Dorian's howling winds, torrents of rain, and surging seas swept across North Carolina's outer banks, catching many of the hurricane-hardened residents of Ocracoke Island by surprise. It's coming into the house. It's coming in under the, under the door. People who defied a mandatory evacuation order got caught in storm surge of up to seven feet and were forced to higher ground. The water levels rose so fast, literally, I would say within 30 minutes, we had four feet of water and it just kept rising. Those who were able to left my boat. Some of the wind gusts here in the outer banks over 80, 90 miles an hour, and that is bringing the tide in. The main concern at this point is water, of course, leaving the beach and going on to the roads. In Wilmington, residents had to navigate through flooded streets. When you've been displaced in a storm like this, two years in a row, it's, it's tough. And Omar Villafranca joins us now. Hi, Omar. So are people still stranded on Ocracoke Island? They are, Tanya. They're still standing on Ocracoke Island, uh, but we talked to the Hyde County Emergency Management, and they're telling us that there's helicopters that are going there. They're still rescuing people. They're search and rescue crews on the ground going door-to-door, -door, assessing all the needs that people may have. And interesting note, there's also, the only way to really get to that island is, is a ferry that goes back and forth. Obviously, when the ocean looks like this, it's pretty hard to navigate that. Uh, but they're expecting, they're, they're hopeful that that ferry will be operational tomorrow. Uh, so they can continue back and forth to bring supplies uh, and also if people want to leave they can't but they're continuing helicopter rescues people are being taken to a shelter that's set up on the mainland and the priority is older people who may need med medical help and so exactly where are these rescued families being taken and what is the next step for them the nearby county is, is uh, we understand is Washington County that's nearby and they're being taken there they're in food, dry clothes, any medical needs that they may have there. They're being taken there um, and assessed. And the interesting thing is, is with that island, everybody always stays on that island. People we talk to are saying every time a hurricane comes, there's a plenty of warning, but those people on Ocracoke always stay. And that's exactly what happened here at this point. So they did have uh, some storm surge on the island, but people are going to go back. We understand that they are going to rebuild. They're going to fix the damage, and they're going to uh, continue living on that coastal island because that's just just what they do. It's what they do on that island. So interesting to see with this kind of damage. Um, we're getting some pictures, especially from emergency management, about what it looks like, but we'll get a better idea uh, because now it's starting to clear up. Right. I guess it's their home, and home is a tough place to give up. All right. Omar Villafranca, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, now look at their point of view. So like it. First off, I'd like to start by saying all praise to Yahweh, by Shema Shai, by Shema Krakadash, double honors to the elders and apostles of the world, and citations to the brothers that's doing the truth and sincerity. Look at their point of view at the end of that, man. Um, especially the women. Uh, a lot of people don't like to lose, leave their homes and shit. Man. That's why people dying. You See, uh, it goes with the scripture that's in the Apocrypha. You got to be a pilgrim on this earth, one. Two, you got to be ready to give up everything because of all the chaos and destruction that's come upon this place. That's why the scriptures say, Isaiah chapter 33, verse 6, we'll read it. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, right? People are asleep. They don't know the times that we're living in. They got to use the wisdom and knowledge of the scriptures to uh, survive all this chaos and stuff, stuff that's going on. That's why the Edomite, in which they're not going to be saved, so it only matter if they take heed or not. 
You know, they getting dealt this way because of all the oppression and the slavery that they have done to the black slash Native Americans. But that's why the Edomite had said, and you know, if he ain't Edomite and he a Jake, you know, that's why he, had, uh, you know, he had to take heed. But um, that's why he had said this is the second time it didn't happen to him. And a lot of these storms and forest fires, tornadoes and stuff, these Edomites are the ones who are being hit. They, they, they're vacation homes, second, third, fourth homes is being hit by this stuff, you know, more than probably a little more than Jake's, you know, but it says Isaiah 33 and six and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord, Yahweh is his treasure. All right. So you got to fear the Lord. How do you fear the Lord? You got to come back to his word, man. Fucking devil, man. This is Isaiah chapter 29, verse 6. It says, Thou shalt be visited of the Lord Yahweh of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise and storm and tempest and the flame of devouring fire. And that's what you see going on. These people getting hit by these storms and these tempests, you know, as well as all these, uh, well, the storms create the floods, you know, uh, and they're not taking heat. They're not, they're not taking warning. A lot of these people just stay where they are and they don't leave. And then they end up getting killed. And that, that, that's that's uh, how the Lord do them. Because the scriptures say, I'm going to read it. Give me one second. Slack yak, yo. <clears throat> This is Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Right. So not only a man, a woman, a child, the Lord directed your steps. So it's meant for you to stay there and get killed by it. It's meant for you to stay there and get killed by it. It's meant for you to stay there and get injured by it. That's all. Uh, you have a shy, you know. All the chaos and destruction that's hidden is because uh, the Lord got them angels on everybody. You know, but the elect going to be protected through all this uh, tribulation. You know, hence what's going on in uh, the Bahamas. The brothers uh, in the Bahamas, they, they they safe. You know, the Lord protected them, man. Call all y'all about shy. And, and, you know, that's what um, time we're living in. The Lord's men are going to be protected for doing the work, man. You know, that's a faith builder, man. That, that strengthens your faith. Let you know that the Lord is going to be with you just for doing this work, man. You know? Same like every time some type of event like this happen, the prophets always make it out. You know, from reading in the scriptures and uh, just in our reality. You know? <clears throat> so lucky. This is Psalm chapter 68, verse 20. Oops, it's not good. Now I'm pressing on. Trash. All right. Psalm chapter 68, verse 20. It says, He that is our power is the power of salvation. And unto the Most High, Yahweh, the Lord belongeth the issue from death, right? So the Lord controls whether you die or not, you know? Just want to bring that out, and this right here is the last scripture. <laughs> I 
This is Luke chapter 21 verse 25. And there should be signs in the sun and the moon and in the stars. And we've been watching that a whole lot lately. A whole lot lately. You can go outside on a regular day and see the blood moon. And see it like resting like it's on the earth. And upon the earth distress of nations. And we see that going on with perplexity. Right. Right. And that's what's happening in their case in Carolina. You got uh, tornadoes hitting. They said over 20 tornadoes. And then you got the little floods and stuff that's going on from uh, the hurricane. You know, and, 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 you know, just picture when it gets really, really bad out here, man. To where nobody can uh, rebuild. No one can put the uh, forest uh, fires out. These niggas. But I'll read it again. It's Luke 21, 25. And there should be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. All right. So, you know, I'm going to end it off with that, man. That's what's going on right now. And with all that being said, all praise to you. How about Shema Rashai? By Shema Karkadash. That will honor to the elders and apostles that we will. And salutations to the brothers who are doing the truth and sincerity. So, um... Uh, <clears throat>